We all have emotions, different ones for different times and days. Happy, sad, angry, fearful, surprised, disgusted. Whatever we are feeling affects the way in which we behave towards other people and ourselves. Hey, I've made you a cupcake. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. I've made you a cupcake. <laughs> cupcake? Oh, what's it? Oh, oh, oh. Do you want a cupcake? Oh my! Ah, ah, ah. I've made you a cupcake. Oh, oh. I've made you a cupcake. No! Although the world likes to throw around unhelpful phrases like man up or you're being too emotional, emotions are perfectly normal and natural things to have. Jesus, the son of God and God himself, had emotions and we read about them in the pages of the Bible. If God has emotions, then it's safe to assume that not only is it okay for us to have emotions, but that we were designed to have them too. Our emotions cause us to have different and unique feelings, yeah, individual to ourselves and our situation. These feelings are based off three things. What is happening in your life, the way you feel about yourself, and how you deal with your emotions. Emotions can last for seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, and even years. Showing our emotions isn't a sign of weakness. In fact, there is great strength in recognizing and confronting our emotions. Sometimes the bravest thing to do is to recognize when we are not feeling quite all right and to do something about it. Although we wish that we could always be happy, the reality is that we can't always be happy and that's okay. The more we are honest with ourselves and the way that we are feeling, the easier it is to handle our emotions as they come. The worst thing we can do is to bottle up our emotions. Imagine this bottle is your head and the water is the different emotions that you feel when different things happen. So uh, when you are called a nasty name at school, when you hear some sad news, uh, when you have a headache, when something you were looking forward to gets cancelled, when you lose something that you love. Oh no. Oh dear. You see, the bottle becomes full, it can't contain it can't contain it. And so it's a bit like that with your emotions. When we um, bottle it all up, at some point it explodes. There's like an there's a it overflows in an unhealthy manner. But what we need to do is to put practices in place to make sure that our bottles don't overflow. Using a journal to write how you're feeling. I do this, and I find it so useful to write down all the thoughts, all the feelings that I'm feeling at the time. What's really good is when you keep a journal, you can look back through it and realize that actually, all those moments where you were really sad and angry and fearful, looking back at them, they seem so small, even though at the time, they seemed huge. Taking the time to pause and reflect on your day, recognizing the various emotions that you were feeling, and more importantly, taking the time to breathe. <sighs> breathing is so important, and sometimes we forget to do it, but breathing <laughs> really helps us to just calm ourselves and to put us back into a better state of mind. Talking to someone you trust, whether that be a parent or carer, or maybe a friend or another family member or your teacher, it's really helpful to talk to someone else. Firstly, it helps us to know that we're not alone in our problems and that we're not alone in general. Often we can feel quite isolated when we're going through difficult times, but actually a lot of people have gone through difficult times themselves and can provide you with some really good wisdom and really good advice to help you through it. Secondly, talking it through with someone else is really useful as it kind of just puts words to the feeling. Often it stays in our head and it can be quite daunting, but as we talk it out, often we can solve our own problems just by speaking it. Talking to God. It sounds so simple and so easy, and yet it is so worth doing. 
talking to God, taking the time to pray and give over our problems to him. He wants to help us in our problems. He loves us and he cares about us. And so when we hand over our problems to him, he will take them and he will help us and give us the strength we need. You remember the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. All of these fruits are so good at uh, helping us with the difficulties and the problems and the emotions that we are feeling. Love, joy, peace. Those are some really good gifts that we need uh, to help us with our problems and situations. Sometimes though, we can experience a certain emotion that isn't joyful for a very long time and it can cause us to live in an unhealthy manner where we don't take proper care of ourselves and we damage our relationships with other people on purpose. If that happens, you should go and talk to your doctor who can help. I've done it before and there is absolutely no shame in doing so. As I said, one of the bravest things you can do is to recognise when you're not feeling all right and to do something about it. When we put practice in place, it's like we're piercing holes into the bottle. And then when our emotions come, our bottles can't fill up because they've got leaks, look. And it's like we're able to release it in a healthy and a controlled manner. Okay, I've made a right mess of this kitchen. The key takeaway this week is that emotions are perfectly natural and normal to have, and we shouldn't be ashamed of feeling them. However, we also need to put in safety measures in place so that we don't become overwhelmed by emotions, so that we can lead the healthiest life possible.